We're potting. Here we are. Hello, my friends. Today, I'm reporting from Bo's bedroom floor. Mm. Oh. What's the scene like over there? You know, he's got his little like day bed situation with the trundle down there. There's his desk with his all his artwork and his trophies. I just went through his books and cleaned that up for him. Some Legos, signed Bellinger jersey. Of course, it's a Cody Bell is little room, you know. Show us where he was hiding the fruit. Under the desk. I don't know if you could see. There's like a little garbage can under there. That's where he was chucking the fruit. Wow, That's so fun. Bo's bedroom. For people who don't know, tell them <laughs> tell them what happened. So I would get. I would when I when Bo had an iPad because you obviously you know it's been gone for so long. He used to. I used to give him like an hour and a half stretches to just go in his room and play, and. I would always give him like healthy snacks while he was in there. And he would like just guarantee eat them all because he's just playing the video game. So he's snacking. He's not even like noticing that he's eating like vegetables and fruit. And I would give him stuff. And he always came back with an empty plate. And he came back one day with the empty plate. And I went in his room to do something. And then I went to go change his garbage. And all of the fruit was in that garbage. So he had chucked it in the garbage and then handed it to me like I ate it. It was just such disrespect. It was like, it was a real low moment for the two of us. Lie in your face. Dude, this this kid's the biggest liar. (laughs) You should just flush it down the toilet. At least he's not a good liar. We're trying to convince him not to become a catcher now. Now he's got this in his head that he wants to be a catcher. And we're like, Bo, you're not built like a catcher, like you're on all these travel teams and baseball teams. You want to spend playing catcher on all of them. Like you're eight years old. You need to get like reps out in the field. Like see how good you are. No, he just wants the fucking gear. He wants to wear every piece of equipment that is made for him being in that sport on his body at all times. Like he made his friend, like his friend was, his mom asked me what to get him for his birthday. And I was like, he made a notes list in my phone and I was like, I don't know. He wants this like Evo shield elbow something. She's like, what is that? I was like, I don't know if it's more than $20. Don't get it. But this is what he says he really wants. He'll be excited. So she orders it and gets it. And it's a fucking elbow pad shield that to not get hit by pitches. I'm like, you're nine. What do you mean? <laughs> Only because. He wants to get the first and take it off and hand it to the first base coach like he watches and makes it. He just wants that moment. That's it. That's the only reason. And Cutter and I are like, yo, bro, this is going to fuck with your swing. Like, this is a big thing on your elbow. Like, you're a little guy. Like, you don't need an elbow shield. Like, it's going to mess up your swing. You've been, like, you've been doing so good. No. I want to, I got to wear the shield. I picked him up from practice today. The coach tells me, oh, he played catcher the whole time. I'm like, God damn it. I was like, oh, Cutter's not going to be happy. And it's so funny because like in Texas, like you could see the sport mentality here. Like the coach was like, oh no, no, trust me. Parents make the decisions in these situations. And I was like, oh, okay, well, great. I'll tell Cutter to tell you what to do. And then he got in and he's like, oh, mom, by the way, uh, my coach was fine with me wearing my elbow shield. And, you know, what was interesting was like he had told me to take it off and give it to the first base coach. And that's what I that's what I thought you're supposed to do. (laughs) Oh, my God. Mm. I love him. I just like I got to let him be him. You know what I mean? I find myself like stopping myself from telling him what to do, because I know if he wants to play catcher all the time, he should fucking play catcher all the time. But like. It's a really hard moment as a parent where you want to let them be freaky mm-hmm. and do whatever, but you also like know he would be much better off like later in middle school and high school if he like was an infielder. If you want to try baseball, he love it's all he it's all he does right now, guys. He walks around with a mitt and a ball twenty four seven. He's obsessed. You got to. So what do I do? Do I let him play catcher? I really didn't mean to dive into this, guys, right away. I, Sorry. I'll tell you, when I played baseball for years, I played catcher. And it's, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think he, he wants to be out on the field. And also, catcher's the hardest on your knees. Like, That's, yeah. It's not good. Yeah, he should, he should be We're like, out dude, the you're field. like a lean, like really quick guy. Like, you should be in the infield. You should be like running around getting balls. Shortstop. Like, 
Right. And he's like, no, mom, what do you mean? Every time the pitch is thrown, I'm in the play. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what's, well, you know what's interesting? I wonder if he wants to be catcher because that's where everyone's always looking. Like everyone's always looking 1, at a thousand percent. You're yeah, so right. yeah. There's the actor in him. He wants to be on screen. You know, this is, I, I just watched, uh, rewatched dead poet society last night, which ties mm. into this exact thing because it's about your parents desires for what your future is and what you should be doing versus your own, you know, sort of desires. And the whole thing is like, you know, Robin Williams comes in and he's teaching these kids about the arts, about poetry and, their parents all paid for this sort of preparatory school so they could go to like Harvard and Princeton. And like one kid tries out for the play, you know, and he loves it. And he has like the, the premiere of the play and he fucking crushes it. And is like, you know, dad is in the back and he's like, you're, I'm pulling you out of this school and you're going to go to a military academy and you're going to go to Harvard and be a doctor. And then like, <laughs> I forgot how dark this movie is and spoiler warning. If you haven't seen dead poet society, but this kid just kills himself that night, you know, it, just because he can't, he doesn't want to do what his dad tells him. And he like, just, so, do you remember? Do you remember? I gotta that? let him play catcher. I was gonna say, Bo's going to be catcher. at the next game with like, to dress like a, what is that? Like a full knight in shining armor. You know, he's going to be <laughs> going to first base, like a clank, a clank, a clank. Yeah. You could just <gasps> oh let him, God, let him do dear. what they're going to do. You could only, I guess, you know, you would know you're, you're already a great mom, but you're, you're they're going to have to just like, you're going to have to just give them as, as many tools as they can. And ultimately like they're the ones that'll make the decision, you know? Yeah. I'm also reading this really good book right now called the whole brained child about like, God, that sounds like, awful. It separates your brain basically into upstairs or downstairs or left or right, like left brain thinking, right brain thinking. It's very scientific and it's very like clear, like explaining how the brain works. It's interesting to learn. I Can didn't you really explain know that what a right example of a right brain so, person versus a left uh, brain person? So if you're scientific, <laughs> I it's love scientific, it, Robert. It's scientific. It's very scientific. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'm so tired. The Scientology. Um, yeah. yeah. So basically, but with the, when they explain left brain, right brain, you're looking at children who have underdeveloped brains, right? You're not fully developed in your brain until your mid twenties. So think about it when you're four and eight, like how far along you still have to go. So it talks about like when they're thinking in their right brains, they're very creative. They're very present. They're in touch with their emotions and their feelings. Like it's when you're like, come on, come on, let's go. And they see a butterfly and then they just stare at the butterfly and like have no sense of the logical stuff. Like it's time to go because they're so like in their emotions and their presence. And then the left, and also as an adult, that's like where you're creative, you're an artist, you're free. You're not, the left side is all logical. It's lists, it's logistics. It's, it's how you survive all the blah, blah, blah things we have to do. So obviously kids live more in the right. So it'll tell you how to like deal with a tantrum. Like for example, if a kid comes, if Bo came out in this room right now and he's like, I can't sleep. I would, I could be like, and he's like, I can't sleep. And I'm so, you're just, you're never with me. And like, blah, blah, blah. And I could sit here and be like, you're being so unreasonable right now, bro. I was with you all day. Like go to bed. Like, what are you doing? Like, that's what I would think because that's like the logic. But as, as a child, they need to have any feeling there have be validated, like that it's like real. And like, you have to, especially when they're very young, like explain them like, oh, you feel sad right now. You feel sad. Like those are some strong things that you feel. And I would never want you to feel that way. I'm so sorry you feel that way. You feel upset. Like I'm right here, but listen, I'm going to put you to bed. And I think tomorrow you and I should talk all about this. Let me figure out ways to not make you feel that way. Let me figure out ways how, you know, we can deal with this, these types of feelings. Can I talk okay? to women like that? I feel like that's a very similar. <clears throat> but that's what I'm saying. As I'm reading yeah. it, I'm loving it, but I'm like, oh, I can apply this in my life. Like everywhere, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And it makes you like understand people like, you know, when, when I can lose my patience and I get really upset and I rant and I stomp all over my house, like 
I am fully in my downstairs brain. Like I have no access to my upstairs, like more mature area. I'm just like in my fucking feelings. Mm. Sometimes we you have to like let yourself explode even as an adult. As a child, it's interesting because now when I like, I'm just, I'm diffusing things a lot better and I feel better about it. It may not have changed the behavior yet, but I feel better in the situation. Right. I have a lot to learn. I really do. <laughs> You know, I'm a, I'm as far right basement downstairs as you could be sometimes. Rob, are you bartending at this wedding, by the way? Or are you in a bunker? <laughs> uh, no, yeah. So my best friend is getting married. So I am in Maine right now, and I am in the <laughs> you in a bunker. <laughs> yeah, we're prepared for ready. war down here. Yeah. I uh, I'm in. Yeah, we're in Maine. We're going to. Uh, it's it's wild. Can you you guys don't hear music, right? No, no, I don't hear anything. Music, okay, there's like a little yeah. music going on upstairs. I was worried. Hopefully, uh, we're not. Is everyone uh, in good spirits? Yeah. Yeah, everything's great so far. Good. Everybody's yeah. I think because like I got here a little early just to like hang with them, but I think everybody really shows up like tomorrow. You know. Oh, so oh, I always like that night in a wedding where it's like only really the closer friends that like have just come a little bit early, so you guys kind of get to like kick off the weekend together in a smaller crew. Bef- like just mm. it's like you make your connection and then you all spread out for the rest of the weekend because all the people are there you know yeah sorry that i just got a little weird the fu- like while i was just like it, like the father of the bride just like <laughs> came in here and was like unpacking stuff into a freezer <laughs> while i was like sitting here potting and i was like uh <laughs> it was so <laughs> so weird it's just crazy but yeah everybody's upstairs they have a house his so his family has like there's 52 weeks in the year they like split this house one they have so many cousins and everything and i guess everybody gets it like one week out of the year oh no way that's such a cool thing yeah so they took like their week and then they took someone else in their family's week next week and they have this house for two weeks everybody's coming up here like rex is my best friend he took me to like golf course today and we went to see like he's like oh here's where we're gonna stand and here's where we're gonna do this and here's you know we had to go get all these coolers and fill them with ice and yeah, he's pumped. I'm I mean, happy there's... for him. Now, a word from our sponsor. Look, I don't know if you guys are like me, but when it comes to trying to find a doctor, um, it's all about like, hey, who do I know that has a doctor or who's gone to the doctor? And let me ask them if they like their doctor. Or let me ask them if they know anyone that has a doctor that they like. I'm tired of that. And I'm glad we don't have to do that anymore. That's right, because you have ZocDoc. It is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, that take your insurance and are available when you need them. And on ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten your teeth or fix an achy back or get that mole checked out. Anything ZocDoc has you covered. You can find and review local doctors. You can read verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments. So just go to ZocDoc.com and find the doctor that's right for you book an appointment in person or remotely, and one that works for your schedule. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and we are one of them. So it is our go-to whenever we need to find a quality doctor, especially when you move to a new city. Trust me, finding all new doctors was a pain in the butt. So I am grateful for ZocDoc. That's right. Um, Look, I use use ZocDoc, and you should too. Go to ZocDoc.com slash pajama Mm -hmm. and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash pajama, ZocDoc.com slash pajama. There's a lot on his head, and I try and be like, yo, tell me what you need me to do and this. And he's like, yeah, I need stuff, but I need to, like, be there. So I'm like, yo, let's go. Like, we just get in the car. We go. We're like. Oh, that's so, you're such a good friend. That's exactly what he needs is somebody to just hang with him while he does all this shit. You don't yeah. want to feel like you're doing a bunch of errands when it's, like, your time to be celebrating, too. So at least when you have your best friend doing it with you, it doesn't feel so laborious, you know? Yeah, and we don't get to see each other very often because I've been living on the West right. Coast and whatever. So it's just great. But, like. As soon as, like, you know, around here, as soon as, like, 6 o'clock hits, everything's closed anyway. So it's, like, everybody eats, and then you just go out to the beach. You create, like, a giant fire, like a bon- – is it – what is, is bonfire? it? Bonfire. Bonfire. I was going to say, Castle was going to love this. I was like, is it bonfire or barn fire? Oh, God, oh, that's a classic Robism. There's yeah. another one. Yeah, yeah I, I was – I, I would have – a minute. I would have said 90% bonfire, but it sounded mm-hmm. dumb – 
on here. If I was in a conversation, I would have just said bonfire. Honestly, I love those moments. A you know, where, where you, you say something and it's like you're just like a newborn baby, you know, like you were just birthed. You just learn something. It's like those moments are few and far between, but they make you they really humanize you. Yeah. Yeah. So we go on the beach. We make a barn fire. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start calling it barn fire. See if I can get that going. <laughs> in your head, is it barn fire because barns always catch on fire in movies and things like this? Yeah, I can picture a barn really on fire. It's a big visual they give in in cinema, isn't it? It sure is. Because all the hay. Barn on fire. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. called yeah. fiery. I've never yeah, seen a barn on yeah. fire. I didn't know that. What is what a is bond? a barn? Exactly. Bonafide fire. A uh, motion to change it to barn fire. What should we get? Let's. Oh, oh. I say bonafide fire. A bonafide. Bonafide. Fire. Oh, fire. is it is a bonafide fire? Bonafide fire. Wow. Listen to I this. I was right. No, no, no. I was oh. saying. Listen to Cass. What? Yeah, he, what? Oh yeah. Does bonfire mean? Welcome to our Three Idiots podcast. <laughs> a large open air fire used as part of a celebration, burning trash or a thing on this one. Yeah, but where? What is the original meaning? A fire of bones. The word is actually derived from a Middle English bone fire, meaning literally a fire of bones. Wow. Okay. The earliest. Now, I don't know a whole word, lot about bones. Is that you've got? It's got to be really hot to burn a bone. Maybe that's why the the fire's just got to be huge and roaring. Hence the bone fire. Wow. Yeah. Okay. What the more are they you doing know, with bones? We are educating people left and right on today's pod. Let me tell you. Bo- so we're maybe, dropping some knowledge today. But imagine how stupid you would have thought I was if I said, "Hey, is it bonfire or bone fire?" And then it would have turned out. Yeah, you're right. I would have been like. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, bone fire, you fucking idiot. Yeah, I'm Cass just gonna and I say would be that. Like side texting, like, what? Yeah, are, can you what fucking believe going this on? guy? I'm gonna say bone fire from now on, so that people correct me, and then I go, oh, actually, actually it's a <laughs> yeah, Middle yeah. English. Uh, yeah. <laughs> people love people like that. Yeah, love it's a, That's when people go, uh, no, it's not chomping at the bit; it's champing at the bit, <laughs> and it is. Jamie. How how are you this week after the surprise Perry Caravello appearance last week? Yeah, hey. we kind of need to talk to you about the the response from our listeners. Is, is has negative. been well, I would say it's mixed. I would say it's mixed. Um, no, no, no. I it's, feel it's, like I've seen way more support in my direction. Okay, here here's how you. Well, how do you I? don't know. You need an episode where Perry's on. But here's the thing: mm-hmm. the engagement and the people who come out for Perry is huge yes. and people love it. But uh, there are some people in our camp who, by the way, I'm sure nine out of the 10 of them never say anything. They just listen to the pod and enjoy the pod, which we appreciate and we love. But the only time they choose to speak out is mm-hmm. when they don't like. You guys need to help me with something. Because Hold on. I'm really trying to get this. Okay. I am. It's I fun know. that you don't. No, no, no. It, I am get. really I'm really trying to understand what the fuck is so funny. Like, because I love you guys and respect you guys and like your taste normally. But I feel like, is this someone that's not okay that we're making fun of? Like, what's happening? I, I like, I can't put my finger on how I feel about it, which is why I get so uncomfortable. Cass? I think the discomfort is in itself what we're, sh- we're shooting for. And we should live in discomfort more. That's what I was told. That's answering nothing to me. I think there, like, you have to get to know and just find out all these. Here's, here's the thing: we're interacting with Perry. Where when me and Kasim learned about Perry, we just watched footage of Perry and saw how he was. And you're like, oh my god, how is somebody really like this? Like, so he's really like this. He's really like that. And there are Not things that he. There are things that have happened so many then times. Are we making from, fun of him? Like, is he okay? Is he not okay? Oh, he's fine. I'm the, not making fun of anyone. I'm giving Perry the opportunity to like grow his audience and give him a bigger platform. He's one of my favorite streamers in the world. Yeah, he's an incredible See, entertainer. But stuff he like that, it sounds really sarcastic to me. And that like everyone that loves Perry is like in on the joke. That, and if you don't, then you don't get it. So it doesn't that doesn't feel genuine. So this is why this is confusing to me. Because you never break character. 
me and Job, me and Rob watch have watched what? Perry. Are you gonna for, call me Josh? Yeah, me and Job. I was gonna say me and Rob watch Perry for hours, and there's that, rarely a moment where we get baffles bored. me. That baffles me. And we interact. He honestly is my favorite streamer in the world. Um, but I did want to take just a couple moments to address some of the comments we've been getting um, in our social media. And okay, but wait, hold on. One second. Let me ask Jimmy one thing. Sure. Jimmy, when you watch Real Housewives, do you feel bad? They are not. This is two different things. Jamie, you're telling me Sonia Morgan is just a totally fine. No, you're right. She's crazy, and that's why you watch her. You're right. Yeah, and and not. Hey, I'm not saying Perry's crazy, but I'm just no. saying if you did think Perry's crazy, Some I don't think. Would. So I guess I just it's just not my sense of humor. Maybe, but also here's the thing: it's like if we were. I think when there's someone who's like that, if we were prank calling his house and fucking with him, then you're fucking with somebody like that. When somebody else. Put, when somebody else is a streamer and they're putting themselves out there and they're saying, hey, I make content, this is what I do, and me and Kasim enjoy that and we want him here, to say like, oh, are you making fun of him? No. I find him extremely entertaining. Like, Jamie, I understand. this guy, well, I, and I use this example all the time, he went snowboarding two times. He got snowboarder tattooed on his arm. Yeah. Along with skateboarder, actor, and comedian. Those yeah. are the pillars in which he lives by. Jamie, that's, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, it's really, and here's the thing. People in his audience point out to him how crazy the stuff he does. So now he's, like, aware of this and that. But, but before there were so many people around to point out this stuff, like, he went and got that. He went snowboarding twice, got that too, and was like, this is fucking sick. Like, this is a dope fucking tattoo. And, yeah. like. Have you ever done anything twice and thought that strongly of it to get a tattoo of that? And thing? then never went back, never done it again. Right. Well, and by the way, he says all the time, he's like, oh, I'm going snowboarding next week, next month, next this. And he just doesn't go, but he got a tattoo on his, Jamie. He, and there's, there's all these people who are saying like, hey, we, they, we heard you're, you're selling all your stuff on eBay and, and, and I bought it and now I want it. And he flips out on these people being like, I'm not giving you my TV. Like, I'm not, where like, if somebody did that to you, you would just be like, oh, that's like somebody's trying to fuck with me. I'm not going to go crazy and like right. lose my shit. So, just for people to, for his reactions to certain things, to me, are extremely entertaining. And they're real. Like, he's not trying to be they're like real. Allowed. He's that's not playing like his, a character. That, he's not playing a character. He's not no. playing a character, but I do believe sometimes he hams stuff up a little because it's been done so many times. He's aware it's like a... Well, he's got it, a catchphrase and things like that where he knows he's got to like... People want to see it, you know? Like with Rob. They want Rob to go, hey, no fucking ZD. That, that he has his ver own version of that. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, yeah. oh! It's, um, look, I've been a fan of Perry uh, ever since Windy City Heat came out, I don't know, two decades ago. I understand why some of you have had some very strong feelings about having Perry on the show. Jamie, I totally get your point of view because you've kind of been, we've kind of positioned Perry opposite the table of you. And in, in it, every time and it every time. And some might say that that's unfair. Me and Rob say that that's good pod. And, uh, but I that just, just happened naturally. It just happened naturally. We didn't egg you him up. You guys on. gave me nothing. You gave me zero warning. You yeah. gave me no, like, we hung you, you out set to it dry. Up for me at all. Mm -hmm. Yes. We gave you no safety. We hung you no out safety. to dry in a one on one battle with Perry, like, and no wow. one wins against Perry. This is why some of our listeners are so upset. They yes. see that what you've done to me. And wanted, we're going to, like, we're going to call you up while you're reading a book about parenting your kids mm -hmm. on your off time and be like, hey, we want to. We want to give you the lowdown on this guest, you know? Well, yeah. me and me and Kasim have nothing to do. We're watching hours of this guy, and we yeah. thought you would appreciate him as much as we did. Yeah, uh, maybe we can all unite and uh, sort of sit together um, on his inevitable next guest on the pod. But I did want to uh, just uh, make an, a, a public apology to some of the people that we really, really apparently offended. I love it. Let's um, see it. One of the one of these people, uh, Miles Pop twenty twenty, wrote two comments on our Instagram. The first is, "Done with this show." <laughs> that was a disgrace having that garbage on. 
no one defended Jamie. F you all. Followed by, you oh. lost me as a listener slash watcher of this podcast, having an ass clown on there, no one having her back complete trash. Here's Miles. what I think. I think if we got fans mm-hmm. who are going to drop us that fast from having one guest on that they don't like, they were going to leave eventually anyway. So I want to give Miles Pop um, a sincere apology from uh, from Rob and I. We would love to have you back as a viewer. I don't apologize. He's not going to see this. Daniel I don't apologize. 89 says, this is the first episode I turned off. Damn. Casman mm. Rob. What about the, ep- what about the episode where we had Perry on the whole episode? Maybe he, f- he missed it. The discomfort and lack of respect not for a loyal Jamie fan. is obvious. It's wow. not funny. Listen this ass Hermie. clown ruined the episode when he is on. Another ass clown. Is this the same guy? Sounds Every like the same guy is making multiple accounts. Got, and he probably doesn't watch our show anyway because he didn't know that Perry was on before. So I can tell you for every one of those we got, we got two work. pro Perry comments. So okay. And wait, here's the thing. Here, wait, let me ask one thing, Cass. If you yeah. go back and look at our last three Instagrams and you see how many comments we way got on it. Way more engagement now. How many comments did we get? And by the way, mm-hmm. people are like, oh, you're trying to get engagement. No, no, no. It's positive shit. People. You were trying Whoa. to get engagement. One out of 100 posts were engaged. <laughs> yeah, right. We don't yeah. even post shit. We're not trying to get engagement. But when, when we do a pod and three people comment and then you do a mm-hmm. pod and 100 people comment, the amount of positive comments in there is way more than our normal pods. Yes. Yeah. And Jamie, I'd like to give you the opportunity to, to apologize to Perry uh, for sort of mentioning that you were uh, watching his brother, Kenny, uh, Caravello. Look what you're doing with that. As soon as we started talking about Perry, she drops the shoulder strap. You see that? Gabby. See, you set me up again. <laughs> now we're going to lose two more listeners. Bleeper, Gabs. <laughs> Look, I don't want to spend more time on this. We're obviously the uh, Pajama Pants crew. We're all big fans of Perry. It's clear that in the comments, there's a couple bad apples, but most of us are all fans of Perry. And if you guys are um, here watching our pod, thanks to Perry. We thank you. and We welcome you with open arms. Yeah. Jamie, so if we're transitioning out of that, Jamie, I have a question, which is, oh, there's Rex. Yeah, kid. Yeah, see? People are. Say, say, tell Rex I said, what's up, homie? I'll tell him. Uh, Jamie, like that, here's though. here's what I want to know. If he's here's here's Rex. Wait, you want you want to come say hi? We're we're podding, baby. Oh yeah, yeah, it's we're the man. We're podding. Wow. Hi Rex. Hey Rex. Con- congratulations, congratulations on the uh, on the wedding, buddy. Thank or you. Coming up. Thank you guys. You getting some good QT time with Robbie there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's in his element. I fed him well tonight. He had his chicken. That's all you need to do. He had his chicken. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. So everything is, he's okay. He's okay. You're taking good care, it sounds like. It's so good. nice to finally put a face to the name. Uh, Rex, uh, Rob talks about oh, you no almost way. every every pod, and we're uh, so happy that he has such a great friend in you. And um, From maybe... since forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Cass, I feel like I know you so well, because, yeah, yeah. Sure I'm talking about you. Well, same uh, to you, and I, and uh, maybe on your next wedding, I'll be invited. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we had some cancellations if you want to just hop on a plane and, and come out here. Isn't it crazy how many cancellations you'll get right before the wedding? Yeah. People kept telling me it was going to happen. I'm like, no, it's not. And then, like, literally the week before, it was like, boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom, boom. We've had, like, yeah. I think, like, 18 people. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Like, in the last, like, week or two. How big yeah. is the wedding, Rex? It's, uh, we're... Well, I don't know what we are now. We're probably around like 180-ish. Oh, that's a good wedding. That's nice. That's yeah. a big size. Yeah. yeah. We invited 270. Um, oh, wow. Was like really hoping that all those people weren't going to show up. Yeah, um, I know. You used to like, you would like celebrate when you get a no. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm so really going to miss you. But, Except yeah. for all of our friends who said, no, we're very upset they can't be here. No, of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I, I, I would oh. love to have a 270-person wedding, but. Who wouldn't? Of course. Jamie, you want to know what I learned from staying at your place? Yeah. What? Uh, Rex, how many bottles of water showed up today? Oh, my God. Four cases? Yeah, I got uh, like 140 waters showed up. Poland? Poland Spring, 140 bottles because I knew what was going to happen. Straight from the factory up here in Maine. (laughs) Yeah, they just drove them them across the street. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. Wow. Well, I got an email uh, uh, made out to you about Poland Spring Water, which we can maybe read here in a little bit, but it's not good. I feel like Gen Z is not happy with you, Rob. No. Isn't it like Gen Z would never be caught dead with single use plastic? Yeah, well, it's I know, more than I, that. I got, I got, I'm sure there's something bad in the water, right? That's what they're saying. Um, do you want me to read it? Yeah, but Jamie, here's the deal. In I remember, you, your friend told me to buy that water purifier thing, and it was yeah. illegal in California. Yeah. Yeah, they, they're like, oh, you can't buy that here. It's illegal. But, but like, I couldn't get it sent to me. I didn't care that they said it was illegal, but I couldn't get it sent to me. Why? Why? I don't know. Look, who, everything's fucking illegal in California. They're like, when you, when you order clothes on Amazon, even they tell you like, you know, ingesting this, there's poisonous. Oh thing, yeah, like, carcinogens. Uh, LA is crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, crazy. In fact, it's not yeah. Meanwhile, crazy. it's like the dirtiest air in the world, aside right. from like India. You come up here, man. Maine is Maine is a different. Oh, I bet that fresh air. Um, yeah. This is. I'm just gonna uh, read a little bit of this email, not the whole thing, just the part about the water. It's from Curtis. He says, "Also, I find it interesting that Rob likes to drink Poland Spring Water, a brand of water previously connected to Nestle. It's no secret of the Nestle exploits from slave labor to continuing to do business with Russia. I'm wondering if Rob could maybe oh my God, think that about just was like so many." So uh, many things. Right. I wonder if Rob could maybe think about changing to a different water brand since there are hundreds of different ones out there. Rob, for comment? <laughs> wow. The, no, listen. The, he das said, Vidonia, Curtis. He, he said their previous relation with Nestle. They clearly saw something was wrong and they cut ties because they're, they're fucking right. good. Responsible. Yeah, they're from Maine, 1845. Yeah. They've been going for 200 years. So long. Now, I think our spokesperson about, about Poland Spring, though, is it's supposed to, supposedly just tap water. Oh, that's all right. Just main tap water. Well, it says 100% natural spring water. There's a picture of a spring. All right. Well, that's listen, it. my cousin wor worked at the factory uh -oh. for Poland Spring, so we'll go to him and get the. Let me get a good truth. last sip in the said, Yeah, I would believe <laughs> him probably more than anyone else. <laughs> if they filter the water through a bunch of metal springs before it gets into the. The plastic water bottle. <laughs> you know, I know a kid, we knew a kid, Paul, who used to work at Subway, and he said they would come in the tuna salad. That oh. is so bad. God. That is so bad. That is so off. bad. There's oh no way you God. could tell because it's already so salty. <laughs> oh, boy. That's so bad. <laughs> that is terrible. These are the but friends Rob keeps. Yeah. It's very but good. Not Rex. One person's comments like a big batch, I think. You know, it wasn't too bad. Oh, yeah. Wow. The cum per tuna, you know, it's like spread out. So you're good. The ratio. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's so thinned out. Into, it's, it's practically not there. That's Have you ever, so bad. Rex listens to the pod. Have you ever had a question you wanted to ask these two on the pod? Don't, don't oh, put them on the spot like that. Yeah, but go ahead, please. Well, here, I'll ask, I'll ask Jamie what I wanted to ask her after traveling this week, which is how do girls pee on planes like because i know girls hover above the seat usually yeah seat yeah a good setup in an airplane bathroom it's moving it's it seems it's hard in turbulence yeah yeah your butt's hitting that seat huh it's like covered in piss <laughs> it's hair is so gross it's so disgusting that's why when people are like oh you do mile high club you're gonna having sex in that bathroom is you gotta no be way. Real fucking horny you have no mile high club is like private planes you cannot fuck on a commercial uh, plane. You just can't. You can only masturbate on a commercial plane. But by the way, when they've talked about Mile High Club from the last, like, you know, before the last 15 years, people weren't talking about private planes. They were talking like, oh, we were on our honeymoon. Like, we had sex in the bathroom. They, some people just don't give a fuck. When I was like, I just feel like it's not possible. It seems that way. I don't know. I'm all about, I'm all about getting my, uh, I like to it's be for the comfy. kids. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. Yeah. I'd be yeah, like, I, those days have sailed for me. Yeah, I could find a hundred things wrong with having sex in, a, in an airplane bathroom and one good thing. I, right. I can't. Hard, hard enough for me to get it into bed. <laughs> <Not doing that. laughs> yeah. Rex, what's the over under? Uh, you are saying your I do's, you look over and there's just waterworks on, on Rob's face. What, what do you think the chances of that is? is happening? Uh, non existent. I think. <laughs> you don't think so, huh, Rob? He's, he's you don't think it, the moment would hit you a little bit? Maybe, maybe like post speech, you know, a little embrace, you know. Is Rob? Are you giving a speech? Oh, you know, Rob's yes, known for his speeches. Yeah, 
This That's is me. gonna. Are you gonna be filming I it, cannot Rex? Wait. I, yeah. Can you yeah, get I, me? Can I, you I please get, get you us a some, copy? Yeah, I'll get you some content for sure. You gotta. You Maybe know, if somebody I, could I, go live on IG during it, that would be great. That would be awesome. I spoke to Rex's dad tonight, and it turned, I told you they're doing open mic for the rehearsal dinner. So I, I'm like, oh, you know, they're doing open mic for the. And he was like, he's like, I get to make a speech. He's like, I thought only you were allowed. They didn't let anybody speak at the wedding. Wow. Yeah, wow. maid of honor. That's it. Yeah. Wow. How are you feeling, Rob? You feeling good? I mean, I've been writing this shit for thirty years. Yeah, we've been. Really? I, I've had notes from like literally like seven years ago. No way. Can you I'm give more... us one line? Give us a little taste, maybe while we so we could see the 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 look on Rex's face as he as he reads it. Or no, how, but I will tell it. you this: when you ask about like would I get emotional or whatever, but like during the wedding, there's a part of the speech that I had to cut out because I couldn't say it. I couldn't say it without getting emotional. Like in, wow! Right? Yeah, when I was practicing saying it, I was like, "Oh, I can't, I can't get it, I can't get it out." Even alone, like I couldn't get it out. Right. Let alone looking at Rex and all these people and feeling the overwhelming just love in a room. Yeah. You gonna wow. write, write a note with that line, or? Yeah. Can you try it now? And maybe I can't say it now. <laughs> if, if we did it now, but I played like fart sounds or something like circus music in the background to kind of help ruin it. Just read it in a Perry Caravella voice. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah. If Perry was here, I could probably do it. Uh, you should give write it. Give it to Perry. Have Perry deliver it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> have Perry do a cameo. I should give it to someone else for the open mic because it's so good. Cool. But it really is. It's next level. But I can't say it. It's too. It's too. It's too oh, tough. Just write me a nice note. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I should write you it right now and have you read it on the. Phone. Oh, <laughs> dude, that'd be so uh, good. Yeah, but then, You're but not gonna I'm... put it in your speech. Just do that. Just write it right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, should I? Yeah, and then Gabby will clip it, and this will be our clip for the week. <laughs> should and I? in the oh. meantime, while you're doing that, I can get to an email to give you a sec. Yeah, you and, you and Jamie do something. I'll write it out. We'll have Rex. Oh, this is going to be good. Yeah, all right. Oh, all right. this Hold is on. awesome. Oh, this is going to be good. Okay. Um, There's a couple emails here. There was, uh, well, we need Rob for this one. But um, okay, look, here's one. Um, I'll read the beginning part from Curtis, who just gave us the uh, sort of the guilty sort of summation of Poland Springs. Um, the beginning of his email says, Hey, I've been listening to you all for a while now and first time emailing hope all is well, Jamie, Rob, I'm a huge Sopranos fan and Jamie, I loved you and entourage wishing you all the best as public figures in the entertainment industry. I must bring up something that I read. I read that is sort of disturbing. I don't know, Perry, this last podcast was the first time I've heard of him. So I looked up his wiki page and wondered why you would bring someone onto your pod and joke with him when he must have very strong negative feelings towards the gay community so much that he would quote unquote run for president with those ideals. I feel like if you weren't just having him on as a joke, I didn't quite get it. Um, one last thing, Jamie, my sister-in-law has MS too, and I appreciate how open you are with your disorder. And I, and I share what you say with her all the time. Anyways, here's my rant for the day. Much love and respect to you all. Um, Curtis is talking about, yeah, please respond to that, Jamie. No, that's just nice. I'm like, it's like when you when I hear things like that, it makes me feel good to just feel like, oh, wow, like you would share something with someone that you felt could help them because of me. It's just nice. And in regards to uh, Perry's feelings around the gay community, I, I don't know what he said publicly. Um, I do know that he has a, a homophobia um, because of an incident really? that happened to him in 1992 where he uh, gave a producer, a blowjob for a role on a movie starring Christina Applegate. Um, but I was under the impression that he really enjoyed that experience. And so to, to hear that he's kind of made public statements ag against the uh, LGBTQ plus community is, is kind of concerning. And we, I want to just state this publicly. We do not agree with Perry. Uh, if he does have any um, sort of uh transphobic or uh anti-homosexual i like that we have rob's typing sound in the background right it makes it sound way. very official like we're sending this to the president to the desk of joe biden <laughs> thank you curtis from wisconsin um uh, okay this one's from derek he says i recently discovered this podcast after looking into what the cast of the sopranos was doing after the show ended i absolutely love it by the way 
It took me a while to have the courage and time to watch The Sopranos. My Italian family guilted me not to watch it because they saw it as just another way for Hollywood to sell the stigma and stereotypes of being Italian. They were afraid I would despise my heritage or succumb to Hollywood's take on it. Who knows? But the Italian guilt was real. At 28, I finally finished watching the entire show, and I have to say I really enjoyed how it painted the strength of an Italian family. Plenty of the scenes of Tony and Carm worrying about AJ really resonated with me as well. I was also a little stunade. Mm -hmm. Jamie, am I saying that right? Stunade. 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 I've, man, every, any Italian that had even just a, a, a monicum of respect for me just lost it. Uh, anyways, glad That's to see it. you all doing well. I still have not told my parents I've watched the show. Maybe I'll tell them over Thanksgiving. Uh, wow. Buona Fortuna. Buona Fortuna. Okay. Did you ever get a lot of like, uh, it was hard to hate. I, I've never hear, really hear anyone hate on The Sopranos, but did anyone um, like have little... that opinion about The Sopranos that it was like? I remember in the beginning when it first started, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. is, uh, um, you know, discriminating against Italians and yeah. poor stereo, further, you know, pushing in the stereotype, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, yeah, I remember there was some of that for sure. Rob, are you ready? Yeah, what we're talking about, how our show was racist. Well, we're just no, like, did do anyone... you remember? Yeah. Remember there was like a, there was a time when like, there was like the Italian defamation league, blah, 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 blah. Oh, wow. The whole league, huh? Yeah. Oh, the whole <laughs> one. Yeah. The, the art, entire so, one. I just wrote this quick. I, I could, I could do much better, but you'll get the gist of what I was trying to say. Okay. I'm sure it's wonderful. Um, so Rex is going to read it. Oh yeah. Rex just cleared his throat. Hold on. Here it comes. Okay. This is a uh, statement that you just wrote, Rob. Do you want to set this up What where this comes from? And this was going to go in a speech, but now it's not. Yeah. This was going to be in my best man. You, you were asking if he, if, to Rex, if I, he think I might cry in the speech. Yeah. And I was saying, and of course he said, no, I'm a man. But besides that, he, I was saying, <laughs> I was saying, <laughs> Jamie loves that. I was saying uh, there was a part in my best man speech when I was writing it that I had to take out because I couldn't, when trying to say it out loud, I couldn't get through it. I don't even know if I'll be able to sit here. Well, you have to because oh, yeah. we, and we now need to we're see getting to reaction. hear it here. Yeah. Ladies and, and gentlemen, Rex is getting it. Rex just <laughs> ditched his entire wedding. I might walk just away. With I us, might by walk away. away. Rex is going to perform an original <laughs> best man speech by Robert Eiler by Robert Eiler. Yeah, yeah. By the way, he's reading this as me. So, okay. Something ho horrible happened in my life. My body and brain just went to autopilot and I instantly grabbed my phone and dialed Rex. I was having dinner with Rex and Jess one night and I told her this. Her reply was, her reply was, yeah, that's because Rex has a way of making Everything seemed like it's going to be okay. And I had never realized that before, but it's true. He does. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Rex and Jess, if you are ever in a hard... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you wanted, Cass. This is this all... Is oh. Guys, this is a nice moment. This is a nice moment. Keep I reading. I love this so much. <laughs> So Rex and Jess, if you are ever in a hard time in life or in your relationship, please know you have 185 people in this room right now who can be your Rex. Whew. Who can be your Rex and remind you of this night and all the love that is in this room and make you feel <laughs> like everything is going to be okay. Woo. That's really nice. So nice. I got to be honest, it's a little, it's getting a little watery over on this side, too. Mm. Rob, you really know how to lay down those words, buddy. You do. You do. But I I can say I've had, like, a seat to, like, watch your friendship since you guys were, like, literally kids. I met you when you were 12 or 13. Yeah, so met me when I was 12, and I met him when I was 6. Yeah. Wow. I mean, like, I remember you talking about Rex, all, always Rex, 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 like that was everything. And I met him through all the years of everything. Yeah. You know, you've, you've always, even as immature little kids, cared <laughs> deeply about each other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. 
And I've seen. I love it. It's been interesting to see Rob's progression through life. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, oh my God. For you and more than anyone, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 And I owe this guy, you know, a ton, you know, for, for everything he's, he's done for me. I don't, it doesn't sound like either of you owe either of you at anything. Like you both have really been there for each other. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, I feel like I'm at a wedding. This is amazing. I know. Thank you for inviting me. That was so sweet. I'm so glad I could make it. Feel like we're yeah. part of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That was really great. You That's know, why I wore a dress today. <laughs> I've said this before, but like the people Rob keeps around him, yeah. If they're in his orbit, there's good reason for it. You know, yeah. he he doesn't keep, he, and you know this, he doesn't keep anyone around that isn't you know, uh, like authentic, um, somebody who's like a, a, just like a real person. And the fact that you know he refers to you as his best friend and he just speaks so highly of you all the time. I mean, I've. I, I can I can see that there's a, a really deep friendship there and it really is so nice to see and um yeah. glad that we got to witness that on a Me too. on a very small scale. But yeah, man. Should work that into the speech. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I, I couldn't do it. I yeah. tried I get it. But those I are the moments it. that people see that. That's like uh waterworks the whole place. You burn bring down the whole crowd, you know, a little vulnerability like that. Ooh, mama. I couldn't do it. I, I was even like, oh, maybe I could say it after something funny. And I tried saying it this way, saying that I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't. The part where it was like, let them be your Rex. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not even if you go like <laughs> right after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got I got Rex as a gun that just says pal. <laughs> <laughs> that was really sweet. Oh, that was so nice. Rex, yeah. so happy for you, buddy. And Thank and I, I really hope to come uh, say hi to you in person one day or next time you're out this way. Def definitely going to do that. I, like I said, you know, feel like I know you. Um, yeah, same. Well I want to definitely hang out with you. You seem like a great guy. Funny. Yeah. Thank laugh, you, sir. So yeah, good. yeah. Same to you. Uh, well, I, I, I appreciate that. And uh, maybe I can come stay in the bunker back there where Rob is staying absolutely. right now. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll move yeah, the yeah. cans of high noon. Yeah. The cases yeah. of Coors Light. Yeah. Yeah. And the Coronas. Yeah. But, uh, and Jamie, I love you. Like, love you. I've known you for a long time, too. And we've for a really long time. Times over the years. And mm -hmm. I'll let you guys get back to it. Thanks for having me. All right, Enjoy Rex. your night and your weekend. I yeah. hope it's everything you could have ever wanted. Yeah. I hope it just goes so great. And you Congrats just continue again. to be so happy. You're my, you're my favorite guest we've ever had. Oh, wow. That's right. Yeah. That was probably the best guest we've had. Mine is Perry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All time. Well, let yeah. me go go sob for a couple minutes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you do that. You, you guys have fun. I love you, too. I'll be up in a little bit. Absolutely. Take your time. Yeah. yeah. I got to tell you, that was one of my all-time favorite me moments. Me, too. Of the pod. Me too. I loved it. You're good. You're a good kid, Robbie. Thank you, babe. You're gonna sleep good tonight. You're a good friend too. I had to. I had to call Cass. I was in a little, you know, not great thing you know, last week or whenever. Ah, it's not, you know, pod stuff. But like, I was talking to Cass. He just had great advice. He's a good person to talk to. He's got a great head on his shoulders and. uh yeah, you know. When, when things are down for Robbie, they're up for me. And when things are up for Robbie, they're down for me. You know, it's so funny. That's, we that's how it really like, is. It's it's crazy. <laughs> we teeter totter, but we are on the same piece of wood. Do you know what Can I mean? Can I tell you both something though? And this isn't like out of jealousy or anything. It's more like I know you both think like because I have a busy life and I have kids <laughs> that bother me. But if something's wrong or if you're going through something, you know you could – I will put aside, a put aside time yeah. for you no matter what I would have going on, right? Yeah. yeah, of course. I always feel that way. But it's but it's also – it's part of me that says like if if I can talk to someone else about this – I know the way you this, think about it. I, yeah. It's like if I could talk to someone else about this, like, you know, I – you know, I think that's probably better. You know, I get it. I get it. 
you gotta, just, and I, you've I, been I that person that. for me before, JB. You know, and I've had uh, yeah. questions about girls or like, where do I find this on their body? You know, you've, all, <laughs> you've, been, you've been very. And I'm sweet. like, I don't know. Yeah, but there is honest. If I'm being honest, there is a part of me that's like, I don't know how you mentally have time for any of that stuff, because like. I you bear, you know, you're so big. I know I, for you guys. I know like, you would. I don't, but Just I will. F- but, we, but me and Rob are more than I think a regular person hate to ever feel like we're inconveniencing anyone. And I know we would never we would never inconvenience but you by doing that. But this is why that. I brought this up. Yes. Uh, yeah. Look, but, but also you you've said things on this pod and talking to you on this pod that have helped me in relationships. And, so, and I put it into use you know and stuff you said from Aww. your point of view or girls but even when i remember when you said like you changed part of like you know i don't know if you made me more like uh empathetic or whatever when like or not empathetic i guess it would be sympathetic when like where yeah or 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 like i think it's uh, sympathetic is the thing where it's like if you're like in a relation in the beginning of a relationship there are a lot of insecurities you know where with me like i i don't not that i'm not insecure i just don't see it that way cuz in the beginning of a relationship i'm like i i got you're i'm so stiff arming people and they can't get in that I don't I don't have a lot of insecurities because if in the beginning of a relationship someone's like you're this I'm like yeah I fucking am get out of here like you know I'm not yeah. vulnerable in the beginning it takes time before I'm that way so like you right. know when you said like yeah in the beginning there can be a lot of insecurities in a relationship and this it makes me more sympathetic when somebody's saying something I'm like oh maybe that comes from a place of insecurity instead mm-hmm. of actually being upset at something I did or this so like I can talk to the person I'm dating from that perspective. And it's helped me a lot. Oh, I've, that's so nice. Yeah. Jamie, you I'm give, so you give great advice and I don't even think, you know, you sometimes know I'm you're not doing meaning it. to, I don't, yes, I yeah. never feel like I've you also, been. but also even when you're not at like outwardly giving advice, just, I think you lead by example in a really great way. I, I think just watch, and I've said this to you, but like just watching you and cutter be parents is, is been like a school in its own, just like how you guys, operate you know like uh, having a full-time job and a full-time family and a, and a husband who works and like kids who were sick and like moving yeah. and, and you know these are all uh things i think just kind of i've had a front row seat to and there's like a that's like invaluable all the time that i've been able to to spend there so even when you're not like giving advice specifically i think you're giving advice so it's you do your that's fair so share nice. yeah well, well, guys, thank you both. That was a really nice pod. Wow, that flew by. Yeah, uh, and it's all yeah like, well, and by the way, Jamie, just so you know, essentially, you're kind of giving me the advice because you gave Casim your therapist, and then when Casim mm-hmm. gives me advice, he's giving it stuff from the therapist. So it's really like you're helping right. me. You're welcome. In right. every way, yeah. There you go. You're welcome. That's it. You're, you know, that's what you do. Even when you're not, you don't know you're helping people. You're just making their lives. Better, but Kasim, Kasim just comes with like, you know, great advice, solid stuff. Yes. And, you know, in a way of like, well, you're sure you're seeing it from this side. You're sure you're doing. Yeah. He, yeah. he feels very diplomatic with his, like, he, like it, you don't, you never feel there's any like heat behind it in a way of like, you're, you're, you're not playing favorites. You're not just going to take my side. Cause I'm your friend. I feel like you're, you're like reasonable. Yeah, thanks. I, I think you guys also do that like perfectly. I think there is a a little bit of like trying to read the room because sometimes when I'm sad and Rob's, you know, I've I've, I've kind of seen him do this is like sometimes I just want somebody to agree with me, even if I'm, you know, just like to <laughs> yeah, just be like, yeah, that wasn't cool. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. And then you some, want your feelings validated. Totally. And like there's and I don't want that all the time because then I'll feel like when you do it all the time, it doesn't really mean anything. So right. there's there's like a really there's an emotional intelligence that it takes to do that. Yes. You both have in spades. And I think that really comes in handy. And all I'm doing when I'm trying to do it is like replicate what you guys have given me. So with that said, we got a lot of love on this pod. That's I a love pod. you guys very much. Uh, love you. Go enjoy your weekend, Rob. 
Yeah, for sure. Have a great, have a great ceremony. Crush your speech. I'm sure you will. Um, yeah, the stuff that's in there is still is still pretty good. But I'm not I'm not going to uh, I'm not going for funny. But also Rex's sister, who I've known for 30 years and probably has never given me a compliment. I think she gave me like the closest thing to a compliment ever. She goes, "Hey Rob," she goes, "Do us a favor." She goes, "Keep the speech like you." Short and sweet. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, Malls. Like, yeah, thanks. It was good. It was funny. Oh my gosh. I think you can yeah. be you can be really funny if you get really like you hit a moment like you that like you can give them that real salty, that real sweet in the same speech. Yeah, I got three sections of it, and the first one is very light and funny. Then yeah. the middle one is like, oh, that's sweet. And then the, yeah. the last one is, you know. Yeah, you kill yeah. them. You kill yeah. them. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait to, to watch the wedding video. Um, all right, that's a pod. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, do us a favor. Click that subscribe button. Click that notification bell. Our videos go live every Tuesday. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on TikTok. We have a subreddit, r slash pajama fans podcast. Jamie and I are on Instagram and Twitter. Rob's off the grid, so do not try and contact him. And uh, we'll be back next week with another pod. You'll still be in Maine. Jamie, uh, you'll probably be in New Mexico. Mm-hmm. And I'll be in Culver City, California. You guys, got anything? Love Thank you guys. You for taking the time while you're there. Okay, love yeah. <laughs> love Thanks, you guys. Bud. Bye. Okay, bye.